There are some things that you can only relate to if you're a skateboarder. Sure, you can try to explain certain aspects of skateboarding to someone who doesn't skate, but until they've invested a significant amount of time into skating, there's just some things that they'll never relate to. In this video, we're going to go over 10 things that only skaters understand. There's definitely a lot of good ones I left out, so go ahead and leave them in the comments. Be sure to leave a like on the video, check out the links in the description, and with that said, let's get right into it. Now, one thing every skater can relate to is watching skate videos. Unfortunately, a lot of skate videos aren't available in every country, which is where today's video sponsor NordVPN comes in handy. NordVPN allows you to set your IP address to countries all around the world, meaning you can have access to way more content, whether that be on social media sites like YouTube or actual streaming websites like Netflix. If you go to nordvpn.com skatebox, you can get a huge discount off their two-year plan with an additional four months for free. Since they have a 30-day money-back guarantee, there's no risk in trying it out. Aside from giving you access to more content, NordVPN also blocks malware, they secure your internet connection, and they even help you get better deals online by allowing you to change your browsing location. I've personally been using them for over two years, and I use it pretty much any time I use my computer. Go to nordvpn.com skatebox to get a massive discount off their two-year plan with an additional four months for free. Thanks again to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. To start things off, we have the feeling of landing a trick. Now, I know this sounds basic, but you can't talk about the things only skaters understand without mentioning it. This is the fundamental feeling that gets all skaters hooked in the first place. I imagine it's similar to winning big in a casino or getting some kind of world record, but I've never done either of those, so I can't really say. All I know is that there are very few things that even come close to the feeling of satisfaction that you get after you land a trick well. To people who don't skate, they can't possibly fathom why someone in their right mind would purposefully skate down some stairs or launch out of a ramp. And that's because they don't know the feeling of what it's like to land a trick. I've experienced a lot of great feelings. Yeah, okay. I, I swear, I don't know if there's a feeling that comes close to landing on them four wheels, Four wheels, wheels bro. right? Yeah. yeah. It's special. For number two, we have admiring skate spots. Other than maybe architecture enthusiasts, there's no group of people in the world that focuses as much on cityscapes as skateboarders. Honestly, these days, people are out there skating on boulders, so this isn't even exclusive to cities. After you've been skating for a while, your entire perception of the world changes. You're always subconsciously scanning the environment, looking for places to skate. It doesn't matter if it's the same road you drive or walk on every day, just seeing a skate spot will automatically take your mind to skateboarding. This is probably one of the weirdest things skaters do, and it's one of the hardest things for non-skaters to understand. Seriously, try riding in a car full of non-skateboarders and asking them to pull over so you can look at a skate spot. I promise you, they're going to think you're crazy, and no amount of explaining will change that. Skaters have a completely different perception of the world, and it's virtually impossible for someone to understand it if they don't skate themselves. For number three, we have going on skate trips. Skateboarders are always looking for new places to skate, so going on skate trips is a common part of the culture. Sometimes this means simply driving to the next city over, and sometimes it means flying to another country. Regardless of how far it is, skaters are one of the only groups of people that will travel to an entirely new place just to do something that they can easily do back home. Now, this isn't to say that other people don't travel, because traveling definitely isn't exclusive to skateboarding. But the style of trips and the frequency of the trips are definitely going to be a lot different. Growing up, me and my friends would drive hours away simply to skate new parks in new cities. At the time, it just seemed like the natural thing to do. But looking back on it, I realized that most skateboarders travel a lot more than the average person. Not only that, but when you travel to a new city to go skate, you see the area in a much more authentic way than when you travel to go play a sport or visit your grandma. It's like the dream, you know? You go around exploring new places, trying to find new spots. That's our mission in life. The fourth thing only skaters understand is slapping your board on the ground. When someone lands a trick in skateboarding, you can't help but to slap your board on the ground in appreciation. Even if the trick isn't that hard, I find myself doing a few soft board taps almost out of reflex. To skateboarders, this is a completely normal thing to do, but if someone doesn't skate, it has to come across as a little weird. Honestly, if someone walked up to a skate park and saw a bunch of sweaty dudes slapping their boards on the ground like some primal tribe doing a ritual, I feel like they'd find it a bit odd, especially since people who don't skate have no reference of what tricks are being done. A skater could land the craziest trick you've ever seen, 
but for someone who doesn't skate, it looks the same as an ollie. So watching the park go crazy and start slapping their boards has to be at least a little confusing. The fifth thing only skaters understand is famous skate spots. The idea of a skate spot itself is already hard enough for most people to grasp, let alone a skate spot that's famous. To an outsider, every set of stairs they walk up and every bench they sit on is exactly the same. They just use the architecture however it was designed to be used, and they don't think twice about it. Most of the time, they couldn't even tell you what makes a skate spot a skate spot. With this in mind, the thought of a random set of stairs holding any sort of significance is something that only skaters can relate to. If you stop and think about it, it is kind of bizarre. There's literally dozens of famous skate spots that millions of skaters can name, but to an average person, these places hold absolutely zero value. Just to prove a point, I'm not going to name any of these spots, but if you know what they're called, go ahead and leave it in the comments. I can confidently say that most skaters probably know the names, even though some of them don't even exist anymore. Another thing only skaters understand is filming video parts. Skateboarding videos first started being made in the late 80s, and since then, they've become the main focus of skateboarding culture. I don't know if all skaters are like this, but I was probably only skating for a few months before I filmed my first skate video. Mind you, it wasn't very good, but the point is, filming video parts is so integral to skateboarding that kids start doing it almost right away. The satisfaction you get from progressing your skateboarding, getting footage of it all, and putting together a video part is really hard to explain. Even if it's only a short edit at a skate park, the creative process of making skate videos is one of the funnest parts about skating. From the outside looking in, it probably doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, sure, in the age of social media, everyone is filming themselves do everything. But even then, it's still kind of crazy that skaters will spend hours and hours trying to film one single trick. Even though contest skating has gotten much more popular recently, filming video parts is still the driving factor of skateboarding. And it's something that only skaters understand. So next up, we have wearing around dirty clothes. For most people, wearing clean clothes and being somewhat presentable is the standard. In skateboarding though, things are a little different. Dirty shirts, ripped pants, and ripped shoes are all part of an average skater's attire. Honestly, if I saw someone pull up to a skate park dressed in fresh, clean clothes, I'd almost be concerned. Skateboarders spend a lot of time falling around on the ground, so it makes sense that their clothes aren't always the cleanest. The thing is, a lot of skaters are just as dirty even when they aren't skating. Of course, this isn't always the case, and some skaters actually clean up well when they aren't out skating. But a decent amount of skateboarders wear dirty, beat up clothes almost everywhere they go. Moving on, we have skateboarding lingo. I'm so stoked, my dudes. Skateboarding lingo is something that only skaters can understand, both figuratively and literally. Even though tons of subcultures have their own slang, skateboarders have so much lingo, it's almost their own language. Whether it be terms that describe certain tricks, or terms that are used in skate culture in general, there are tons of words and phrases that skaters use that just don't make sense outside of skateboarding. For example, if I said I hate Benihana's, all of you would know that I'm talking about the grab. But if I said that in front of anyone else, they'd assume that I just don't like Japanese food. The funny thing is, you don't always realize how weird skate lingo can be until you happen to say it in front of a non-skater. For skateboarders, these words make perfect sense, but to people who don't skate, it's basically an alien language. I swear I did a quadruple McTwisty McFly with a squeeze. <laughs> Up next, we have constantly being injured. Now, there's a chance that some old people could also relate to this, but for the most part, it's primarily something skaters deal with. As a skateboarder, it's inevitable that you're going to get hurt occasionally. Whether it be something minor, like a bruise or a sprain, or something more serious, like a broken bone. Skaters deal with injuries a lot more than most other people. This is something that skaters kind of just get used to. Having some cuts or bruises becomes normal, and no one thinks twice when they see someone skating with a brace on. Of course, people get injured doing other things as well, but it does feel like it's much more common in skateboarding. So another thing only skaters understand is dealing with security. Unless you're someone with a criminal history, this is something that you've most likely never had to deal with. Skateboarders on the other hand almost know security guards by name. Since skaters often go to the same spots, most of which they aren't allowed to be at, getting kicked out is a common occurrence. 
Because of this, skaters get used to dealing with not only security guards, but law enforcement in general. While most people panic and get scared when they see a cop or security guard, skaters are used to it, so they're much better at handling the situation. Well, sometimes they do just run away, but most of the time, they know how to talk to them and work things out. The point is, casually dealing with law enforcement is something every skater gets used to over time. It might seem kind of weird for people in their teens and 20s to be so comfortable talking to cops and security guards, but it's so ingrained in skate culture that most skaters don't even think twice about it. No matter how hard you try, there are certain things that skaters deal with that just can't be explained. These are things that make total sense in skateboarding, but are completely bizarre in most other settings. If any good ones were left out, go ahead and share them in the comments, do me a favor and leave a like on the video, check out the links in the description, and with that said, thanks for watching.